Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, in today's video, we're doing the episode part four of the Girl Talk series that I started on my channel um, a year ago, but you guys seem to really like it when I posted my last episode and you want you guys wanted me to continue it as a series. So yeah, we're gonna be doing part four today. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me any questions you had related to period, sex, relationships, anything any of you girls are going through and yeah, we're just gonna talk and answer some questions today. The first question is, what's the biggest no-no for you in a relationship? Arrogance and like cockiness is very putting off for me. Kindness is very important for me. So when someone's arrogant and not kind and if they treat other people like shit, I hate that. Also, obviously, loyalty is important, so if you're a cheater, that's a no-no. And yeah, I think those are the basics that I feel like most people have. Someone said, do all girls bleed the first time they have sex? Um, based on what I know, like based on me and my friends and things, some do, but not all do. I personally didn't um, bleed my first time, but I have a few friends that did bleed a little bit but I've never met anyone who like bled bled it's usually just like a little bit which is super normal I mean obviously when you have sex for the first time your hymen can break which is like a muscle and you know it can cause a little bit of like bleeding which is super normal so it's nothing to really be worried about some people do some people don't based on what I know the next question is some girls have small boobs and they feel sad about it does boob size really matter I personally have small boobs and I love it like I know there's people that are obviously insecure about it if you're, if you're talking about like you know what a partner would be concerned about if your partner is mature i don't think he or she would care about you having small boobs i love my small boobs i don't have to like when i work out i don't have to deal with the pain i don't have to um wear a bra i always wear like sports bras like this i never wear a padded bra anymore i love my small boobs you should do someone said have you ever had a vaginal disease after sex not like an std i have had a uti before I feel like you guys should learn from me. Always be after you're sexually intimate with someone. I didn't know this information and I ended up getting a really bad UTI like last to last, 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 last year actually. And this question also brings me to something even more important. This video is in collaboration with Proactive For Her. Proactive For Her is a digital platform for women which offers healthcare solutions that are accessible, personalized and confidential. So today I'm collaborating with them to bring uh, more awareness on HPV and the importance of the HPV vaccine and I actually collaborated with them and got my HPV vaccine myself a few days ago. So for those of you who don't know, HPV is a group of viruses that cause infections on the skin surfaces and it's one of the most common viral infections. For example, in 2018 there were 43 million HPV infections and most of them occurred in individuals between their late teens to mid 20s. The way HPV spreads is that it can spread through skin to skin contact um, you can get it if your vulva or vagina or penis or anus or cervix touches someone's uh, infected mouth, genitals or throat during sex. In most cases, HPV doesn't cause any symptoms. And for those of whom who do get symptoms, it mostly shows up in genital warts. But in severe cases, it can also lead to cervical cancer. And cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among Indian women. And three doses of the HPV vaccine can help you limit the risks to a pretty big level. And while it is recommended that you take the HPV vaccine before you're sexually active, um, everyone between the ages of 9 and 45 should take it at the earliest. And the vaccine also has high effectiveness with uh, minimal to no side effects. So I personally had not received the vaccine yet and I was actually supposed to get it a while ago because my mom had constantly kept telling me over the past few years to get it before I became sexually active and I kept pushing it and I didn't end up getting it but I finally got it in collaboration with Proactive for her which I'm very happy about. It was a super easy process. I had a 30 minute consultation with a gynecologist before my vaccine just to talk about any questions I had or any doubts I had and she was very clear about everything. She kind of explained the whole process to me and the importance of it and everything and then after that consultation I booked my vaccine appointment and someone came home to give me the vaccine so super easy super convenient um, I literally had no side effects my arm hurt for just like an hour after the vaccine but it went away and yeah it's just super convenient and easy process and I think it's so important for 
women to know this, especially considering that cervical cancer is the second most common cancer among women in India. So yeah, I think it's super important that you check out Proactive for her. The link's gonna be down in the description. They offer at-home um, HPV vaccine services. So you can get all three doses from the comfort of your house. And you should also check out their website. They have other services like STI testing, full body checkups, PCOS programs, and a lot more. And if you're in Bangalore, you can visit their newly opened flagship clinic on 12th Main, Indranagar, and get the vaccine there along with physical consultations with judgment-free and trauma-informed doctors. The link's gonna be in the description, so make sure you check it out. Someone said, how do you deal with insecurities and jealousy while you're in a relationship? For me personally, I'm obviously gonna talk about my experience. I don't really feel insecure or jealous very often. Sometimes obviously everyone has some kind of insecurities either about themselves or their partner and things like that. And for me, I, it tends to come from like my past experiences which like affects my current relationship, which is the main thing you have to get, you know, across and you have to overcome. Um, you know, just because someone behaved a certain way in your past relationship doesn't mean the same thing's gonna happen in your current relationship. And if you do feel insecure or jealous about something, talk to your partner about it, make them understand what's bothering you. And just some reassurance helps, you know, maybe some sol problem solving reassurance, things like that will help. So I would just say talk to your partner and make, like try not to let your past experiences affect your current situation. Someone said, what do you think about masturbation as some can't have sex? in real life. Um, I think it's super healthy. I think everyone should, especially girls, because I know it's very common. Everyone talks about like guys jerking off and guys masturbating. Um, I feel like I haven't really heard about women masturbating as much as I have as guys masturbating. So I think it's super important to do it. Um, I think it's so healthy, especially to just become more in tune with your own body and your own like sexual side. And sexuality and I also think it's important to know what you like and what you don't like and just to discover your own body you know I think it's super healthy and I think everyone should do it honestly what do you do when you need a self-care day personally when I need a self-care day um, I just honestly like sitting in bed cuddling with my dog and watching movies like that's my favorite form of self-care when I'm like really in the mood for self-care I like getting a massage I get a massage like once a week just for self-care like I'll get get a massage lady to come home and just, you know just give me a massage when I'm feeling like de-stressing or I'm feeling tense about anything it's super nice for self-care also basic small things like you know washing your hair or shaving or doing your eyebrows things like that help me personally that's what I do for self-care Someone said, is it normal to feel scared, nervous and awkward while having sex for the first time? It's so normal. It's completely normal. I think to the point where literally everyone feels like that. As long as you are ready for it and you're doing it with someone you're 100% comfortable with and you trust. But it's completely, completely, completely normal to feel like awkward or shy or anything like that your first time. I think everyone feels like that the first time. Someone said, is it okay to wait for the right one to have sex? I doubt if maybe I've set my bars too high. It's completely normal. Um, if you feel like you wanna wait for the one who you feel most comfortable with and the one you're 100% sure you know you have a future with or whatever, that's so normal. A lot of people do that. Go for it, you know, trust your instinct. Someone said, how to shave the vagina. I'll give you the tips I use and I think it, what I do does a pretty good job honestly. Ex first exfoliate your skin, just remove dead skin, any ingrown hairs, things like that and then I always use a fresh razor because that has like that makes the shaving I like, guess close to the skin as possible so I always use a fresh razor. I personally use the Venus razor and I always use like a fresh one, shave it um, with the hair and then I shave, uh, once I'm done with that, I shave against and then it's pretty smooth and then moisturize with like a moisturizer that's safe, like a safe moisturizer for that area. And yeah, that's what I do and it works pretty well. Someone said, how to deal with boys who show interest first and then ignore you? Ignore them back. If they don't want to put in effort, I think, you know, you can find other guys who would be more interested. Yeah, ignore them back and find your man. Of woman. Someone said, does having a crush on cousin normal? No, no, no. Someone said, is porn addiction bad? I think porn is setting high standards and hopes and it's ruining my relationship. So I have a personal take on this. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I also don't think it's good. I don't, I personally think porn is 
I don't watch porn. Um, I have obviously in the past, but I don't anymore just because I feel like it sets extremely unrealistic standards, like you said, um, with like these amazing, perfect looking women with like their perfect vaginas and things like that and perfect boobs and things like that. And it's also a very dramatized version of what sex is actually like in real life. Like no one has sex like that in real life. Um, and it can make you feel super insecure about yourself. Like you said, it, it, it definitely affected me in the past when I was like younger. Um, before I became sexually active, I watched porn and I was like, oof. So yeah, overall, I just feel like it's not necessarily healthy. It's not like bad, bad, but I don't think it's healthy either. My personal opinion. And yeah, I think with that, I'm going to end this Girl Talk episode 4, part 4 video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed this little girl on girl time. Ooh, that sounds wrong. I didn't mean girl on girl. I meant like heart to heart time with me. And yeah, um, let me know in the comments if you like this series, if you want me to do more. And also make sure you check out Proactive for her. The link's going to be down in the description. It's genuinely amazing and I think it's super important that you guys check it out. So yeah, with that, I will see you in my next video.